Hosea 5 and 15 because there's importance in repenting. There's report importance in changing your mindset. If you want to see your communities get better, if you really want to see your communities change, you have to change your mind first. Right. Because if I was to give you money in the mind state of, like for instance, right? Look at the young people in the communities now, right? You give them money, you give them these big record deals or whatever the case may be, and what do they do? They're gonna do the opposite. They're gonna go the opposite direction in the way that they're supposed to go with. What's that mean though? They're gonna buy let's say, cheer, okay, buy let's cars, say, I, let's say I sell drugs, right? Yeah. I'm a trap boy, you know. I done got a couple bodies, you know, don't nobody know about it. I'm respected in the hood, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get on. White man, he come give me $5 million, right? And tell me, yo, your music is crazy. Boom, boom, boom. We want to sign you, right? What am I now going to do? I'm going to sign. But what my characteristics, my actions, what are they going to do? They're going to go sky high. They're going to go higher, right? Uh -huh. That's why you have today the trap music, the trap industry. That's what they've done. They've amplified the, the trap. They've made the trap look much more greater than what it is, right? right. So now everybody that's in the trap, they see that and they like, yo, I gotta turn up. I wanna get out. I gotta, yeah, that's I gotta get on. That, yeah. Cause, and then in my mind, because I got on from doing this, I'm like, this is what has made me successful. I have to keep this up. Bring it out. You think God is blessing all the trap niggas. Bring it out. Because that's what we've been told. We think that getting a bag is God blessing us. Read what you got. Hosea chapter five and verse 15. Uh -huh. Bring it out. I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their offense. You have to acknowledge your offense to the Lord. We broke God's commandments. That's what we did. You gotta be a man and be like, yo, I'm a whoremonger. I sleep with women to woman to woman to woman. The Lord don't want me to do that, I gotta change that. If you never recognize that you have a problem, you're not gonna be able to fix it. Thus, while we come out here to teach our people, listen, yo, we jacked up out here. We gotta change our minds. People don't want that, they want the quick fix. They want the, they want the instant meal. That's right. They want the today thing. Because you know what? Change is hard. Change is a longer process. Change is falling and getting back up. Change is doing it over and over and over again. We don't like that. Bring it up. We don't like that. We like the instant change. We like the, the Power Ranger. Like we so I got a question for you. Am I wrong with what I do every day go to work? No, not at all. The scriptures say it. Huh? Yeah, only on the Sabbath day. But get that in uh, First Thessalonians too. Only on the Sabbath day, that's on Sunday. S Saturday, we gonna get that. We gonna clear it all up for you, bro. Yeah. We gonna Bring clear it, it all up. I'm, I'm, First, finish, I'm, I'm, finish I'm, I'm, out Hosea. I'm trying my best to understand it. Hosea, chapter five and verse fifteen. It Bring it up. We gonna clear I it all up. I will go and return to my place. Uh huh. Till they acknowledge their offense. You see that? Till we acknowledge in our offense, read and seek my face. Uh huh. In their affliction. In our affliction. So when you get shot down in the streets, right? When you can't pay your rent. When all these things happen, when you're getting afflicted as a people, low income, you can't buy a house, you can't get a loan for school, you can't get a loan for a car, whatever the case may be. The Lord says in your affliction, you must, the black man, the black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, they must be afflicted to realize. They have, to, we have to go through things in order to realize we gotta change. That's how we in the hood. We wait till we get shot a couple times to be like, yo, I gotta stop doing this. We wait till we catch an STD to be like, yo, I shouldn't have been. We wait till we get cancer from smoking uh, cigarettes to be like, all right, now I'm ready to stop. We have to be afflicted in order to change our ways. Uh, Tobit 13 and six. Really? You know. you know. Tobit 13 and six. We have to be afflicted because we, we are hard headed people, man. We hard headed. You ever give your homeboy advice and he go do the opposite? Yeah. And then afterwards he be like, bro, you know what? You was right, bro. Because we hard-headed. We hate taking advice. Especially from people that look like us. Yeah. We'll get directions from the damn white man before we'll take some from our own people. That's right. 
Hey, bro, you know where so and so is? Oh, no, nah, he don't know what he's talking about. Let me go ask the white man because I know he knows. Oh, man. That's how we do. Yeah. That's the psychological warfare that has been on our people for decades after decades, centuries oh. after centuries, from slavery. Read that. Tobit, chapter 13 and verse 6. Uh huh. If ye turn to him with your whole heart uh -huh. and with your whole mind uh -huh. and deal uprightly before him, then will he turn it to you and will not hide his face from you. So remember, Hosea said that he was going to hide his face from us until what? Until what? How long was God going to hide his face from us? Go back. You got it? Until you read Yes. Read it. I will go and return listen. to my place. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Uh -huh. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Till when? Till till they they acknowledge their offense. Go back to Tobit 13 and 6 saying the same thing. Tobit chapter 13 and verse 6. Uh -huh. If ye turn to him with your whole heart. Meaning and repent. Rick. And with your whole mind. Rick. And deal uprightly before him. Uh -huh. Then will he turn unto you and will not hide his face from you. See that the Lord will no longer hide his face from us, Read. Therefore, see what he will do with you. Uh -huh. And confess him with your whole mouth. And do what? Confess him with your whole mouth. You got to confess those things with your mouth. Read. And praise the Lord of might. Uh -huh. And extol the everlasting king. Exodus 20. Because we want to get into a couple of laws of what we got to do, right? We know we got to repent, but what we got to do? How must I repent? Because repent means to do what? Repent for your sin, pray. And, and, what does it mean, though? What does it mean? What is talk, the word repent? You got to talk to God. Huh? You got to talk to God. Y'all making it too complex. What get, does it get mean? Get on your knees and ask for forgiveness for the mistakes. But what are you, what are you telling the Lord that you're going to do? Do the right thing. What are you telling him you're going to do? Change and follow him. What you change say? and follow change. him. Change. Change. Repentance means change. That's right. That's but right. it means what? You have to, to repent, right? Meaning you're going back to doing something that you left off from. So the laws of God was given to these people right here in the wilderness, right? When Moses read the commandments off to the children of Israel, he read them off for the purpose of us. We was the ones that was getting the message. Not the other nations. You see that? So in order for us to repent, we have to go back to the laws that God gave us. And we have to now keep those things. You see that? So when you find scriptures in the Bible that tell you what to do, how to live, you have to apply those things because that's how the change comes. What you got? What, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 2? Oh yeah, read that and then get me Exodus. 2 Thessalonians. About working. Chapter 3 and verse 10. The brother, yeah. the brother asked, is it wrong to work? Right? For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, uh -huh. that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. You see that? You have to work. Remember. In the beginning, Adam had it all. But what happened? Sin came into the picture. And the Lord said, by the sweat of your brow. You see that? You have to work. You must work because we all have families in this captivity. Exactly. Right? Even in the book of Tobit, when you read the book of Tobit, they were captive. Right? But they still worked. They still worked. And Tobit had wealth. You see what I'm saying? So they were rich among us also in captivity. But with those riches, what are you supposed to do? Are you, am I supposed to go on TV, Instagram, hold money to my end, no. and be like, we the money boys? Take care of your family. You're take supposed to take care of your family and do what? Make sure take care of your bills, take, take care, care of your household. Take care of your people. Yeah. Your people. Go to Exodus. Let's get, them, get some laws. Your community? Uh, just your community? Your people. Oh, okay. Your people. I got you. You know, like your Jay Z's and uh, your Beyonce's, your Rick Ross's. They supposed to take care of their. They supposed to take. How come? Hold on. Let's let's pause before we get that. We got wealthy people in our in our community, right? Oh. We got the Oprahs, the Steve Harveys, right? Uh -huh. 
the Jay Z's of the world, they have a lot of money, right? Yeah. How come we don't have any Black Wall Streets? That's right. That family. How come in the hood where we live, we have no stores to go to, and we have to go to the other neighborhood? This store right here, why is this not owned by a black man? Bring it out. Right. Like about eight and y'all see on a daily basis how many people go in and out of here. Mm -hmm. We own nothing. All the black man want is to look good. That's while true. the white man want to own everything. If you look around, it's going to be hard to... Matter of fact, remember, uh, what's his name? Uh, Killer Mike. He did it. It's a little show he got on Netflix where he went and he tried to do a whole, what was it? A, a day where he tried to buy black? It was like a week. Uh, yeah, it was like a, a week where he tried to do nothing but buy black. And it was almost damn near impossible. Everything he wanted to do, he wanted to try to do it black. His car, everything, his toothpaste, uh, his deodorant, his food. Everything he was trying to do, he was trying to do it only black, and it was almost impossible. There are no black car manufacturing companies. That's right. <laughs> we don't have them. We have nothing as a community, so why is it not that we're taking the money that we get and build up our communities? You know what we do? We get that money, and we take our kids, and we take our families, we move them out of the ghettos, and we move them right next to the white man. That's right. Bring it out. And we say, look at me, I'm up here with the white man. That's what we do. That's what we do. We say, I'm up here with the white man. Now your circle begins to change. All your friends are now white people. Your business partners are white people. And guess what their conversation is? Is their conversation about, you know what, uh, uh, Sean Puffy Combs, tell me about how we can fix the black community. Is that their conversation? Yeah. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no! They not worried about how to fix your community. That's why the politicians and stuff, they will say these things, but they will never do them. Bring never. Read what you got, Exodus. What you, what you have? Acts 4, 34. Acts 4. Read that, you might as well. Read Acts it. chapter 4 and verse 34. Uh -huh. Neither was there any among them that lacked. You see that? During this time period, the apostles made sure that there was nobody amongst us that lacked. That's how we've been as a people. We naturally, we want to, to do that type of stuff for each other. Y'all know how it is when you get together with your people and you just feel that camaraderie. you like, y'all love this feeling. Because black people, we like being around each other. But the, the problem today is that we like getting together in wickedness. That's what we do now. We get together, buy a whole bunch of bottles of liquor, somebody bring a whole bunch of tree, weed, right? And we want to have a good time, fornicate, in our drunkenness, and revel. That's what we like to do now. Great. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses, uh -huh. sold them! You see that? They, the people who had a lot, they say, you know what, I got a couple houses over here in Decatur. I could, I, could, I could sell these real quick. Let me get this money to my community and see how I could build it up. That's what they did. The, those who had possessions of land, they came and they sold the land and they brought the money. Read, it's going to tell you. And brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. You see that? So the ones who were the business-minded people, they came and they brought the money to the apostles, the men that were doing the work. And they said, listen, I want to give this. I want to be able to help towards my people, help give towards the body, those who need, those who don't have as much as I do. You see what I'm saying? That's how you got to be. First, uh, First Timothy 6 and 9, I believe it is. First Timothy 6 and 9. Is that what I want? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. You see that? The scriptures say those that are rich in this world, they fall into temptation and a snare. Because what does money bring? A lot of attention. <laughs> what does it bring though? Women. More money, more what? Problems. Problems. More money, more problems. More money, more problems. You got all types of temptation coming at you when you got money. 
every black man that get a lot of money, who does he go and marry? Bring it up. Oh, I'm done. He go and marry a white man. Bring it up. Everyone. I be looking to see sometimes. Cold, you'll run across videos on YouTube, cold, brother, talking bro. powerful about black people in his community, boom, boom, boom. And I just be waiting to see. Let me see if this brother is married to a black woman. And nine times out of ten, the brother's married to a white woman. Bring it up. Bring it up. To his oppressor. Y'all take me home with that, brother. You don't think they intimidate them to do that? Are you are you saying that the white community? You're, you're asking if the white community intimidates blacks into marrying them? Yeah. I wouldn't say it's intimidation. What I will say is that it's acceptance that the black man is seeking for. Because remember, we want to be accepted in this society. That's what we're trying to do. So because your whole life you've been told that you're aggressive, right? You're this, you're that. You now, to show the so-called white man that you're not who he thinks you are, you say, listen, I'm gonna marry me a white woman because I want to show you that I'm invested into the white community. So I'm okay. I'm not I'm not the angry black guy. You see that? Because who you marry is who you invested into. Bring it out. But if you say you were running back for Atlantic Falcons, you make it but you making lots of money, right? They don't want you to marry into your community because you'll invest back into your community. Like oh, you most said. definitely. Most like definitely. That's an investment. Most definitely. Right? We say so, the same thing. Right, but, but to, to have them continue to come at you over and over and over again and then threaten your football career if you don't marry your white man. I'm sure that happens okay? too. I'm sure that happens too. It does. I'm because sure. we done had the conversation with ball, ex-ball players. Yeah. That they got divorced from them white women. Absolutely right. Okay? I'm sure that does so they happen. Bring it out. As we say, bring it out, they brought it out. hundred percent. Read that. First Timothy chapter six and verse nine. Uh-huh. Yeah. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Uh-huh. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Because that white woman is what the Bible calls a snare and a trap. Right. Because you marrying a white woman, how you think she gonna feel about you hanging this up on your wall in your living room? Bring it up! When she, when she, that's who she believed to be Jesus Christ. Her, her daddy's done, done painted this man. You think she gonna let you bring him in the house when her family come over for Christmas that you're gonna be celebrating? How about any non, any non, not just a white woman, any non-black woman? Oh, most definitely. Read that, Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 and verse eight. No. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So the Bible says for us to remember the Sabbath day because there will be a time where we will be stripped of our heritage. We will be stripped of God's laws because of our disobedience. So God says, listen, when you repent, remember the Sabbath day. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy. How do you keep the Sabbath holy? He's going to explain. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. And thou shalt not do any work. The Bible says that on the Sabbath, don't do any work. So guess what? On your job, you're supposed to go to your boss and say, listen, for religious purposes, I want to request to not work on Saturday, if it's possible. Guess what? If your boss tell you, hell no, what you got to do now? Uh, no, I'm gonna follow his law, and I'm just gonna not gonna work on Saturday. Right, but uh, what I'm freedom. saying is, if your boss tells you no, I'm not giving you Saturday off. What you gonna do? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit down. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come to work, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do no work. Guess what? You gotta start looking for another job. You gotta start proactively looking. You gotta pray to the Lord that He give you an, another job. Right. Okay. Tell him don't quit. You don't just say, "I right, well, I'm out of here. I'm quitting." But now you know in your head, all right, he don't want to give me the Sabbath off? All right, now it's time for me to start oh, proactive, look. proactively looking. Okay. See what I'm saying? Because the, the goal is to keep God's laws at... at, at that's right. Meeting. That's right. That's what we have to do. Okay? Uh, uh, Say it again? Oh, right, 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 right. Because right. you, you did mention about you sitting down. You, you got to do your job or they're going to fire you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that too. So, uh, Exodus uh, 35. But you know, mine's always tell me ain't no requirement. No, so get like, Nehemiah, ain't uh, no requirement. 15. He always say you ain't. Saturday's not obligated. We ain't got to work on Saturday. So 
So I'm glad you said that. I'm sorry, 13 and 15. You might 13 and 15. Say what you said again. He always say it ain't no requirement on Saturday to come work, but when we first when I first started working with them, they always work Monday through Saturday. Okay. But then he'll switch it up. Okay. So So you're not required. It's it, it, it really hard to predict with him because he he be on some really some trying to play these little mind games and all that stuff. So I try to Okay. But now that Nehemiah, I know. chapter 13 and verse 15. Bring it up. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and lading asses as also wine, grapes, and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. So this is going into buying and selling on the Sabbath day. We are also not supposed to be buying and selling. So you see brothers and sisters walking back and forth into the store. This is Nehemiah telling you what happened back then on those days. In those days when those same things was going on on the Sabbath. Read. And I testified against them. You see that? He spoke against them. Those that were doing trade, buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Read. In the day wherein they sold victuals, uh -huh. there dwelt men of Tyre, uh -huh. also therein, which brought fish in all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. You see that? So you had the other nations coming into our communities trying to sell us things. The same way you have the nation of uh, Ish Ishmael, the so-called Arabs today, you got Moab down here, the Chinese man with more better wings. The nations come and they sell to you. And they do it on the Sabbath. Because what, what usually happens on Friday? That paycheck come Friday. So you spend Friday night to Saturday night shopping, spending your check. When the Sabbath kicks in. Because the Sabbath kicks in when the sun goes down. Friday night, Friday evening is when the Sabbath begins to Saturday evening when the sun goes down. Read. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, uh -huh. What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? That's the same thing we're saying today. That's evil as hell for you to go in here and buy on the Sabbath day. It's evil as hell for the other nations to come here selling you things on the Sabbath That's day. That's right. These are the things that will fix our communities. It's the change. If we learn, okay, listen, we can't buy on the Sabbath. When we shut down the stores, guess what? That's going to hurt their pockets. And America's economy will fall. Shut it down. So that lets you know that, guess what? We can't buy, sell. We can't cook. Let's get it cooking. We're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath. Cook, You're not supposed to cook nothing. You get you a cold cut sandwich or you start finding creative meals to eat. But guess what? Chicken On the salad. Sabbath, chicken salad. Chicken salad, tuna salad. Smoothies. But guess what? You're not supposed to cook on the sat on the Lord's Sabbath day. That's right. No hot food, no hot coffee, <laughs> none of that. Read that. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 23. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. Uh -huh. Unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today. So he said, listen, there's something called the prep day. Before the, the day before the Sabbath, get all your stuff ready. Already have prepared what you want to do. If you say, you know what? Hey, I'll be wanting some chicken on the Sabbath. But you know you can't cook it on the Sabbath, so guess what you got to do? You got to have some cold chicken. Cook the chicken before, let it rest over till tomorrow. Read. And see that ye will see, see what see, ye will see. See that which ye will see. Read. And that which Boy. remaineth. Which is boiled. Sorry. And that which, which, which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. See that? So whatever you have left over, keep it up until the morning. So we're not supposed to do what on the Sabbath? No hot meals, no drink, no hot coffee, what? none of that. Okay, what else? Uh, not work. Okay, what else? Um, don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. Um, 
Yeah, no selling. And no selling. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. These are the things we gotta learn to convert and change our minds. Bro, this is what will help us get back in right with the Lord. Because remember, in Hosea 5 and 15, it says that he was gonna turn his face from us up until we did what? Until we come to him and repent. You see that? Up until we repent. That's why we read for you earlier in Christ, you a new creature, bro. That old man that you once knew, you gotta throw that away. You gotta throw that away. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.